why I should have become an elevator installer. Open the door or I'm gonna throw rocks through your window. Now, I gotta tell you, I love the fact that I'm a plumber, but I still remember one day being on a job site and talking to one of the elevator installer technicians and I literally thought to myself, wow, I should have done that. So I'm gonna share with you some information today comparing being a plumber to being an elevator installer. Now, an elevator installer, there's gonna be goods and bads to it, just like there are being a plumber. But what I wanna tell you is elevator installers are probably the highest paid construction trade that there is. Now, they have very specialized training and there's not as many of them. But we're gonna go into that and I'm gonna cover all of it right now. Now, first of all, I wanna cover the pros. The pros to being an elevator installer. Now, don't get me wrong, the plumbers and the plumbers union have the exact same thing, but most elevator installers are union because think about it, they're almost all commercial jobs, although there are some residential elevators, but to be on a big commercial job, you know there's gotta be elevators. Now, residents, not necessarily. Even a one, two, three story house may not have an elevator in it. So that limits the number of elevator installers that there are. But the good thing about being in the union, especially the elevator union, is great pay. Like I said, one of the highest paid construction trades there is. Show me the money! Great benefits. Their health insurance plan is really, really good. And pension and retirement plan. They've got you set up. And that's the one that when I talked to the guy on the job, I was like, you know, I wish I'd have joined the elevators union. The reason being, they had a lower number of each years that you had to meet to get credit for that year. And once you went so far over that, you could get up to like two years service. So I remember one year as a plumber, I worked about 2,900, 3,000 hours. 9,986,000 minutes. It's a lot, but it was a lot of overtime and I made really good money. But I only got 1.2 years service with the union because anything over a certain number, I think it was 2,100, you went up to a 0.2, so you got two tenths of a year for service. The elevator installers union, and I say installers, elevator installers and repair techs, but their union, actually I think the guy told me over 1500 hours, they started accumulating more and they could actually get two years service for every one year they worked with enough overtime. That's not a bad gig. Can you imagine working 15, 18 years and retiring with a 30, 36 year pension? Not too shabby, especially a pension that pays as good as theirs does. So those are the pros. Now, the cons, well, like I said, you've gotta be union. There really is not much choice. Now there may be a few open shop elevator companies. I'm not sure of them though. What I'll tell you though is, just being commercial, just being union, it really does limit how many jobs there are nationwide. You may apply for an elevator installer position, it may be two or three years before you get accepted. Now we'll talk in a minute about what all you've gotta do, the aptitude test, the tool recognition test, and then the interview, but right now, think about this. It's one of the hardest jobs to get because it pays the most. If you're young, and you are looking for a trade to get into right now, the elevators union could be the ticket for you. So like I said, it's harder to get into, but also one thing, and I've talked about this in the getting into the trades program that I've got, always know your end game. Well, as an elevator installer or repair technician, you may never own your own company. That may never really be a viable option. So think about that too. If you're one of these people that you're like, look, one day I wanna open my own company, one day I wanna work for myself, as an elevator installer, you may never do that. So pros and cons, they kind of match up the same as the plumbers, but plumbers do have residential and service and a bunch of different things. There's not near as much service for the big elevator companies. Most of them, they do it with their installers because those guys are already familiar with it. And also residential might be a whole lot closer to your house. So there, there's pros and cons both ways. If there's only a few high rise buildings going on where you can get a job as an elevator installer, that's where you're gonna end up having to drive to. You're never gonna get lucky and just, hey, you know what? They're building a neighborhood right behind mine and I went to work for that company. Probably not gonna happen. So one of the first things you've gotta do is take the elevator industry aptitude test. Now this is just gonna try to figure out 
what all are your skill sets? It's really gonna consist of three parts. You've got math, you've got verbal skills, and you've got mechanical aptitude. So math is really simple math. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and converting fractions to decimals and decimals to fractions. The reason being, you never know when you're gonna get the directions, what it may come with, and what your other parts may be or what your tape measure may read. So you've gotta know how to convert fractions and decimals back and forth. That's probably one of the hardest things about math. The rest of it, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, something we've been doing since kindergarten. Next is your verbal reasoning. What is your vocabulary? What is your sentence recognition? Do you recognize how to talk to customers, to apprentices, to somebody that may be having an elevator problem? You've got to understand how to communicate with people very good. So verbal reasoning is really a big thing. Being able to communicate reasonably and make sense of things, that way you can explain it to other people. Next is mechanical aptitude. Now, this is where a lot of people may struggle. You've got to know about gears and racks and possible rotation. You've got size, speed, velocity. You've got rotational and linear. So there's things that you need to know. Now, don't get me wrong. These are things that are going to teach you later to understand to be very proficient at it. But right now in the mechanical aptitude, they want to see what you know. Then you've got your pulleys, your force and your torque. Then you've got force and load, which is more leverage, screws, lifts stuff like that. Now that's pretty much the mechanical aptitude test. Now let me compare that to plumbing. Plumbing, you get online, fill out an application and you probably got a job. Well, it really depends on where you're going to work at. There's commercial, there's residential, there's service, there's new construction, there's union, there's non-union. So you have a lot more options and I'm comparing it to plumbing, but really compared to electrical, compared to HVAC, it's about the same. You're gonna be limited on the elevator positions, but getting into the other trades could be very easy. If you wanna to go to work for a small residential service company, literally, you just go in and apply. A high school diploma, anything like that. And if they're part of a union or an organization, there may be a really good training program. So there's options both ways, but a lot of times it's easier to get a job as a plumber, an electrician, or an HVAC tech. Now, back to the elevators. After you take the aptitude, now you've got tool recognition and an interview. Now tool recognition may just be just that. They're gonna lay some tools out and you've gotta identify what they are or be able to tell them. So my thing to you is if this is something you wanna do, I would look at studying what tools do elevator installers use. Be familiar with them, know what they are. And on the interview process, well, we talk about that in the getting into the trades program. You've gotta know what people are looking for. What is that owner, that superintendent? What is it they're looking for from an employee and can you fill that position? Now don't get me wrong, if you go in to apply for a plumbing job, you still gotta go through the interview process and there may be some kind of a test just to see what you do. We do a personal evaluation test. We wanna know about a person's character. Not necessarily their aptitude, we feel like if we get the right person, you get a great person with a good character, we can teach him to be a good plumber. So we kind of look at it a little bit different. But I understand the aptitude test. Why spend a lot of money training somebody if they're not mechanically inclined or they don't have the aptitude to learn it and understand it and become really good at it. So that's my idea of why I think, you know what, I might have should have been an elevator installer. But then again, right now, I would not own my own company. And that's something I do enjoy. Let me know if you've ever applied to be an elevator technician or if you've ever thought about it or even gone through the test or the aptitude test. I'm really interested just to see how was it for you and what you thought about it. I thought about it for a while after I talked to that guy because I thought, man, if you can get two years service for every year, you're gonna be able to retire sooner and possibly then even do something else. So do me a favor, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. What trade are you interested in getting in or what trade are you already in? And how does that compare to being an elevator installer? I hope you enjoyed this. Now we've also done other videos about plumber versus HVAC, plumber versus electrician, things like that. But this, the elevator installer and repair person, those guys, they make more money than most of us. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.